Today's video is going to be about the differences between the F-16 and F-18. We'll talk about the high and low speed handling characteristics of each aircraft and maybe some of the design compromises that were made. Right now I'm in the F-18 and this aircraft, both of these aircraft were designed to be a lightweight fighter, but the F-18 uh, needed some, I guess, additional low speed handling qualities uh, to be a Navy aircraft. It also needed two engines. Uh, so look outside of the aircraft, I'm going to slow it down and get the flaps out and everything. From the front we've got these leading edge flaps, full length of the wing, just like the F-16. The trailing edge flaps, I want you to notice that these are actually two part flaps. So if you can see the little gap in between there, there's actually two pieces to the flap. Uh, that makes it essentially larger and able to create more lift. It's also an added complexity and adds a little bit of weight. Um, but having the ability to generate more lift uh, is, is important and the flight control system of the F-18 takes full advantage of that. All right, behind that we've got our rudders and with the flaps down you can see that the rudders actually kind of lean inboard a little bit and this is to create some more drag in the back and actually increase the low speed handling. We've also got two horizontal stabilators here in the back of the F-18, same as the F-16. Going back inside the aircraft, uh, we'll actually we'll do one maneuver here that's kind of like my my favorite thing in the Hornet. This really just demonstrates the differences between the two. So you may have heard of the Hornet's uh, low speed pirouette qualities. This aircraft actually has full rudder authority at very high angles of attack, unlike the F-16. And what that means for you in a dogfight is that when you happen to get slow with another aircraft, uh, say you're dogfighting the F-16, he might run out of airspeed and the nose in that case is just going to be frozen straight in place until he drops his angle of attack. On the Hornet though, uh, you can actually execute pretty much full turn. So I'm going to do full afterburner, just kind of see it down here around 180 knots. Let's look outside. If I boot the rudder one way or the other, it's going to work, no problem. See that rudder deflection. So we're about stalled out here and I've got full rudder deflection and I'm able to spin out. You can hear this stall warning going off the aircraft. I guess angle of attack warning, it doesn't really stall. Now let's go back the other way. Yeah, no, no problems getting a nice spin going here at low speed and the rudder will give you a full deflection. We'll compare that to uh, the Viper here in just a second. All right, we're here in the Viper and I'm gonna do a little bit of the same thing as with the F-18 just to demonstrate the differences. So I'm slowing down, I'm gonna put the gear down, get the flaps to come out to full. And if you look in the Viper, we've got good full length leading edge flaps. The trailing edge flap though is a little bit smaller. There's no aileron, so the aileron doesn't droop there at the end of the wing, so you don't really get the full length of the wing. And also the flap is really just like a one piece design. It's not as effective or as large as what's in the F-18. So this aircraft, uh, just due to the design, has a little bit more difficulty generating lift at low air speeds. Uh, the other thing to note in the Hornet, the flight control system does a fantastic job of mixing in the rudder with aileron and allowing full rudder authority at extremely high angles of attack that lets you get that spin. Um, let's see, in the F-16, that just really doesn't happen as I'm about to demonstrate. So here I am at a somewhat reasonable angle of attack, not very high, about 10 degrees, but I'm, I'm pretty slow. You'll notice if I boot the rudder left or right, I can get pretty much full deflection either way. And a good spin rate going here. Now, if I do what I was doing there in the F-18, which is max out the angle of attack, there's actually a rudder limiter on the F-16 to prevent it from departing controlled flight. So when I get into that high angle of attack regime like I was with the Hornet, the rudder is just essentially gonna lock up uh, with no deflection and I'm not gonna be able to spin the nose. So we'll just see what that looks like. Pulling into high angles of attack. I am full deflection rudder right now. You see the nose is locked straight ahead. I have full right rudder in. The rudder is barely deflected. So I have almost no authority 
to spin. Now, if I reduce angle of attack, you'll see the rudder comes back. Watch. I have full deflection on that rudder, and I can again move the nose around. So, where that comes into play is in a, in a dogfight, basically. If you get slow with a hornet, uh, you're in a bad spot because that hornet's still going to be able to pull his nose around, deflect his rudder, move the nose left or right, where in the F-16 you're just kind of going to be out of luck. Now where the F-16 does shine is in the high speed environment. Uh, the F-16 has a 9G limit and it is also lighter and has a higher uh, thrust to weight ratio than the Hornet. And that's again owing to compromises, right? The F-16, they're both lightweight fighters, but the Hornet needs to be good around the boat. It needs to have two engines. The F-16 is good with a single engine, which is a little bit more power for the weight of engine you got in there than a two engine design. And then it's also lighter because they don't need to do things like the two piece flaps. They don't have big leading edge extensions going out almost all the way to the cockpit. So it's a little bit, maybe a little bit less draggy. So the F-16 uh, does, does great in that high speed regime. If you can get it up, uh, we're talking about rate versus radius fight. If you're in a fight with another aircraft, a two circle fight, you're up around 450 knots. You can pull high G sustained rate. See, I'm actually speeding up here at five G's. G, by the way, is in the top five G's, six G's right there. Let's get up to about 500 knots. Let's see what I can do here. Yeah, so I'm sustaining 7.2, 7.3 Gs here easily. I believe the advantage is, is somewhere in the neighborhood of two degrees per second in a high speed rate fight versus the F-18. So I can easily carry 500 some knots, eight and a half Gs there. Whereas the Hornet is gonna be on the G limiter at about 420 knots. Let's take a look at the Hornet. All right, back in the Hornet. We've got just an air-to-air -air loadout, no bags, and roughly 80% internal fuel. The G limiter is at 6.4 Gs right now. So if I'm at 490-some knots and I try to pull here, I'm just going to hit the limiter. Right now I'm on the G limiter. It sticks back all the way. So in the Viper at this speed, I'm pretty much max performing. I'm getting about all I can out in terms of turn rate out of the aircraft. We're in the, the Hornet. I'm actually being limited here. Now, if I slow down, I'm going to get some of that back. Somewhere around 400 does a little bit better for the, uh, the Hornet. So full afterburner. This rate is going to be a li just a little bit slower than the F-16s. All right, here comes an F-16. Let's see what we can do. I'm staying pretty slow, and I'm going to try to kind of work this out. So it's hard to predict how a dogfight ends up. This is just the DCS AI F-16. My goal is not to get into a fast rate fight with this plane. All right, we're both a little bit slow. Here he goes behind me, and I'm just gonna demonstrate the pirouette right here just to spin around and point right at him. So full rudder. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. Don't forget to subscribe. Close.